we're not Newton's machines. We're part of an incredible series of living systems that spans the Earth. I visited James Lovelock in the west of England. He's a chemist whose work has been a revelation to me. Almost 40 years ago, he perceived the largest living system of them all, the one that's kept the planet fit for life since life began. To begin the story, uh, I was a science fiction addict. I had been since a kid. I really loved it. And when they started exploring space, it seemed to me, you know, almost a dream come true. And I'll never forget the day I had a letter from the director of space flight operations of NASA inviting me to join in with their first moon uh, landing expeditions to be one of the scientists responsible for analyzing the surface. It, it, you know, to me it was just like a love letter. It was one of those really exciting events of a lifetime. While he was with NASA, he joined a group of scientists searching for signs of life in the solar system. He wondered how we could detect life on another planet without going there. He focused on the planetary atmospheres. What he found changed the way we see our world. When you look at the atmospheres of the our three planets, Earth, Mars and Venus, they are enormously different. Mars and Venus, which are dead, both have atmospheres which are dominated by the gas carbon dioxide, which is what you'd expect from the distribution of elements. But when you look at the Earth, it's a totally different matter. We have methane, and hydrocarbon, and oxygen, and they're reacting all the time, burning like a cold flame in our atmosphere. If you were a Martian astronomer, so to speak, looking at the Earth to detect signs of life by atmospheric analysis, it would shout back at you, we're a living planet, and there's no questions about it. All sorts of things would come back immediately from the atmospheric composition. it began to come into my mind at that moment. And I remember it very vividly. Well, if our atmosphere is so extraordinarily different, so reactive, uh, and yet it stays constant for millions of years, something must be regulating it. And since I knew that these gases all came from living organisms, it must be life that's doing the regulating. So now I had my um, idea of a, a system on the Earth that could regulate the climate and the chemistry. That all came together in, in that one, just... In one, wow, what an exciting afternoon. moment. It was an exciting moment. James Lovelock saw the planet as a living entity. He saw how the totality of life on Earth creates and maintains the conditions for life, cycling the crucial elements earth, air, fire, and water. It was a new vision for science, but one with deep roots in human tradition. He named this planetary entity Gaia after the Greek goddess who first drew the world from chaos, breathing life and form into matter. <laughs> 